Time to catch up with UTRGV Baseball. My name is Jonah Goldberg, and this is the one and only head coach of the UTRGV Baseball team, Manny Mintrana. Hello, Jonah. Hey, coach. Well, since the last time we saw Coach Mintrana and the UTRGV Baseball team, they've only played two games. A 4-3, 10 inning triumph over Texas State, a team receiving votes in the top 25 poll last Tuesday, and then yesterday, a tough 6-5 loss at Incarnate Word. In the middle, UTRGV was supposed to open up WAC play, at Northern Colorado with a three game series, but that fell by the wayside. There's this thing, they call it snow. We don't really get that down here, but they get a lot of it up in Colorado and the Denver area. And uh, because of that, the series snowed out. And what's that like when you find out that your first WAC series of the year, the thing you've been gearing up for all year is kaput? Extremely, extremely disappointed, uh, Jonah. Obviously the boys were uh, ready to play. Uh, we had just, uh, Played probably our, one of our best games, if not the best game of the year, the Tuesday before. Um, so um, the guys were down, we were down, um, but you know those are some things that you just can't control. Um, and as you mentioned, the, the, that snow thing, we don't get a whole lot of it down here in South Texas, and you can't control the weather. So um, we have to make adjustments, and we just um, we, we got to roll with the punches. So what was the travel like? I know you were able to get as far as Houston. Can you on Wednesday and Thursday you did some traveling? Can you take us through those two days? Yeah, it was it was a long two days, Jonah. Um, we, you know, we left Wednesday morning on time here from campus. Uh, we flew out of Harlingen. Uh, we got to Harlingen. Uh, I mean, we were, while we were there, uh, we were told by the airlines that our second leg of the journey from, from Houston um, was canceled. Um, so uh, we scampered, and they were running around. We were running around trying to see what flights we can catch to get to Colorado. Um, they, they were finally able to uh, get us on a flight. Um, but the only thing was we'd have to go to Houston and we, we would arrive around 1130, uh, stay there till 8 p.m. Um, at 8 p.m. take a flight from Houston to San Antonio, oh, man. spend the night in San Antonio, and then take a flight at 6 a.m. on Thursday morning uh, to get to Colorado where we had a, uh, a three o'clock uh, game. So we get to Houston, you know, we were in the airport for about eight hours. Uh, the good thing was the guys got a lot of studying and um, we took the flight from Houston, uh, to San Antonio while we are at the airport. Our assistant coach did a great job, uh, Sean Red, of making phone calls because we had to line up the bus, uh, the hotel rooms, making, you know, it's not easy when you're trying to get 18 rooms in a hotel. Um, so we were able to do that. Um, so we get to San Antonio, um, we put him in a bed, it was a long day. Um, we woke him up the next morning at three um, to be down, dressed, uh, have some, uh, some breakfast by four. But at 3.30 we got a phone call from the airlines that uh, our flight had been canceled and the earliest they can get us in was Sunday. So we sent the boys back to bed. Uh, we called our travel agent, try to you know, work out, maybe fly into another airport, bus it to Colorado, but it was just impossible. The earliest we could have gotten there was Sunday. So um, we let them sleep till about eight o'clock. We got them back, uh, we were able to get a, a bus from San Antonio to bring us down. So basically, you know, for that, that 24, 36 hour period, I mean, we were just uh, nomads. We were going from place to place. <laughs> and on top of that, we weren't able uh, to play, which that was the uh, that was the biggest bummer of the month. How'd that affect your team having to, to miss those three games? What were you able to do to try and keep sharp? It's it's not the same. Um, you know, we inter-squatted just to keep the, the pitching rotation in line. Uh, you know, Johnny, we inter-squatted Friday night. Johnny Gonzalez uh, threw about uh, five or six innings, and we did the same thing on Saturday for Andrew Garcia and Eddie Delgado. But it's just not the same. Once you start the season, um, you know, you try to enter squad and you try to get the guys to un understand the importance of it and to get motivated. Um, but it, it's definitely not the same. So when you, when, you know, when you miss out the first week and, and it's a conference week and you're looking forward to playing, um, it's, um, it's a struggle. So um, again, we just, we enter squatted, we took some batting practice, but it wasn't, uh, it's not the same as playing the opponent, not during the season. How did you think that long layoff affected you yesterday at Incarnate Word? We're a little bit rusty. Again, you don't, you know, prior to the season, the inner squads serve a purpose. Um, you feed, you know, some live pitching, some live hitting. Uh, but once you start the season, the inner squatting thing is just, uh, it gets a little bit old, especially, you know, when we had to do it on Friday, Saturday to keep our guys sharp. Um, and then we usually, on Mondays, we, ha we have a smaller inner squad, three or four innings, just for, um, for the pitchers that didn't get any work in on the weekend to ke uh, keep them uh, sharp. Um, but you can tell, I mean, uh, yesterday, um, we were a little rusty, I think, on the bases. Uh, we had some base running mistakes. I thought we hit the ball well. Uh, we graded out at the end of the day pretty good um, offensively. 
But, uh, you know, the one thing that uh, has been strong for us um, all year just kind of let us down yesterday, and that was the bullpen. Uh, you know, had a two-run lead, and we blew it. Um, and we ended up uh, coming short by one run. So the bullpen has been, you know, pretty much stellar the rest, um, pretty much for the entire year. And um, Last night they were down, but, that you know, that's going to happen. Of course, it had been a week since some of those guys have worked. Or, you know, Austin Kaprovich had been two weeks. Gallegos and Lamb had been a week for each of them. So that's that's a tough thing to come in, especially Gallegos, a field pitcher, to have that much time off. Yeah, we gave, we gave Parker an inning on the inner squad thinking that, uh, you know, he would be fine. Um, but just wasn't his night. I mean, he's been lights out for us every time he's pitched. Um, and he had an off night last night. But, you know, throughout the course of the year, that's going to happen. The thing we need to do is make sure that uh, we minimize those outings. One guy who didn't show any rust at all was Scott Mercer. My goodness, three RBI and his first career home run. Scott uh, has come a long way um, from last year, uh, Jonah. Uh, you know, I kid him about it. He was a big, you know, basically uh, an out dressed in a baseball uniform. Um, but he's really worked extremely hard. Um, put on some weight, uh, hit the weights really hard. When he came back after summer, he looked really good. Um, extremely coachable. Um, does um, what he needs to do to get better as a player, but also takes coaching. Um, and he's having a nice year for us. And yesterday, you know, he was our guy. I mean, uh, like you said, three for five, um, a home run, uh, a two-out uh, hit that uh, also brought in an RBI. He was, uh, really did a good job for us offensively uh, yesterday. Now, another guy who probably wouldn't have been rusty because uh, he was pitching on his normal day, Justin Quinones. He pitched in both of your last two games over his first two starts of the season. What have you seen out of him these last two games? He's, he's really come a long way. Um, that was the uh, Justin that we were expecting uh, to see early on, which we did not see. Um, you know, got a lot of innings in last year, did uh, very well for a freshman. Um, we were expecting for him to make that jump. And what we were hoping to see early on was what we'd seen from him last week. Uh, versus Texas State, and then yesterday, um, where he threw, you know, I, I guess yesterday, six and two thirds, struck out seven, um, was pretty good. And then he really competed and pitched really well against Texas State last week. So we're hoping that, um, you know, he's back, um, you know, like the Quinones we were expecting, and from his last two outings, we think he is. Both of these games, he seemed to get stronger as the game went on. In fact, if you look at last night, he had one strikeout through the first four and a third innings. And then over his last two and a third innings of work, he struck out six more batters. Yeah, which is, which is you know, which is funny because his Vela was also uh, rose in the last few innings. Um, he was throwing a lot harder um, that sixth and seventh inning than he was the first and in, in, in second inning. Um, but like, as you said, he really got stronger as the game went on. Um, and again, we need a quality arm middle of the week um, to keep us in games and give us a chance to, to compete. And, we, you know, Justin has uh, filled that role nicely. What does that do for your depth, you know, when you have a guy who you can rely on uh, on weekdays? You know, now you don't have to worry about maybe having a bullpen day and knowing that, like you said, you can compete on those weekday games. It's important because those midweek games, um, you know, they add up. Um, obviously, our, our season is going to be revolving around the next eight weekends in the 24 WAC um, games. But uh, it's always nice to win those middle of the weekends. Keep, you know, it gives you momentum going into the weekend. Um, but Justin has done a really good job for us the last two weeks. Well, good to see him going. And now, uh, finally, this weekend, you'll, uh, you got Johnny Gonzalez, Andrew Garcia, Eddie Delgado lined up. And you finally get to see Delgado uh, making his first start and his first appearance in a while now. Yeah. Um, you know, we bought him in um, to be one of, our, one of our starters. Unfortunately, um, he had some uh, tender, uh, tenderness in his arm, which set him back a little bit in the spring. Um, and also, he got really, really sick, where uh, he was sick for about a week, um, mm -hmm. lost some weight. So between the, you know, getting sick and the soreness in the arm, um, kind of his progress was, you know, kept him at bay for a little while. But he's back, he's healthy, um, competes, good athlete, uh, throws the ball, uh, three pitches. Um, so we're excited to have him back and, you know, to, to follow up uh, Johnny and Andrew. I, I feel those three guys are going to keep us in the ballgame. And you started off against the tech, uh, New Mexico State team that – uh, they're they're much improved this year over last year. You know what? Um, they can they can they can pitch it. Uh, you know they can hit it a little bit. Jonah uh, defensively is probably their Achilles heel a little bit. They're right around a 950, but they're a good ball club. Um, and we're going to see some some you know some power arms. Um, our offense has to get up there, make sure we get quality of bats, and make sure we're able to string some of those together. Um, but we're going to have to play good baseball this weekend um, against New Mexico State. Um, to make sure that uh, you know we end up uh, you know hopefully taking the series. 
They only get 24 WAC games instead of 27 now. So is there an even more added emphasis on each of these WAC weekends now? We were we were feeling pretty good and confident going into Northern Colorado. Uh, we played really, really well. Like I said, probably one of our, if not the best game, we played all around against Texas State, um, uh, probably the top two. Um, to get, you know, lose those three games when you're playing that well, um, it's, it's, it's always a negative. Um, you know, when you're playing well, you want to play. Too bad it didn't happen, you know, when we were struggling. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's our winning percentage. Um, we felt we could have gotten into Northern Colorado and at least won two out of three. Um, and at the end of the day, those, you know, the winning percentage dictates, you know, who are the six out of the 10 teams that make the playoff um, and go to the uh, WAC tournament. So we have 24 instead of 27, we have to make them count. When you look back on that Texas State game, I mean, that, that's a really good team. I mean, that's a top 40 program this year. And uh, to be able to, to beat them, even after blowing in a lead in the ninth inning, and to come back and walk off against them in the 10th inning, what, what does that mean for the team this year and the program going forward? Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's the guys, obviously, um, confidence, uh, felt good about themselves. Obviously, when you win, you feel a lot better um, the next day. Even though you're tired, you're not as tired. Um, you know, you sleep better, the food tastes better, everything is better. Um, so it was a good win for us. Um, the thing is now, you know, it doesn't mean much uh, beginning on Friday against New Mexico State. We have to do it all over again. Um, but I think uh, the guys are going to come out. They're going to play hard. Um, I think they're looking forward to it. UTRGV plays host to New Mexico State this weekend. Start of a four-game homestand Friday at 7, Saturday at 6, Sunday at 12. And then Incarnate Word comes to town Tuesday at 6. 30. You can catch all those games on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel 323 or even better in person. Gates open an hour before first pitch. He's Manny Mantrana. He's the head coach of the UTRGV baseball team. My name's Jonah Goldberg. We'll see you next week. Until then, get your V's up.